In this episode, let's have a look at the differences between a cardioid pickup mic and a hypercardioid pickup mic when doing indoor dialogue. Check this out. Now, as independent, low budget or no budget filmmakers like many of us are, we originally, when we look into the whole question of how to get better sound, we often learn that a shotgun mic is a really good choice because a shotgun mic is very directional and helps reject some of the other sound around your set and helps you get cleaner audio. Then, if you look into it a little bit deeper, a lot of professional audio engineers will suggest that a shotgun mic may not be the best choice for indoor dialogue. And the reasons for it are somewhat technical, and I don't entirely understand it myself, but you can start to get phasing issues from echo that's bouncing off of the walls through the interference tube design of a shotgun mic. I'm not gonna go into all the details because again, I don't entirely understand it, but you can start to get some strange things from that echo that really kind of emphasize the echo and start to do destructive things to your overall audio signal. So why not try a hypercardioid? And in fact, recently I purchased a hypercardioid small diaphragm condenser mic, namely the Audio-Technica 4053B. Been using it, been pretty happy with it. It's not a night and day difference. You can check our previous video where we looked at the difference between it and the shotgun mic, namely the Rode NTG2 in this particular room here, which is very echoey. And it was a little bit better at handling the echo, but not night and day. There still was some echo and there still were some issues with it. I did some additional reading and kind of looking around and I have seen some people suggest that maybe a cardioid pickup mic may be a better choice than a hypercardioid. And I thought that's a curious statement. And first I thought, yeah, it doesn't make any sense because the uh, rejection on a cardioid pickup mic doesn't fall off as quickly. It's not as tight of a pickup pattern as a hypercardioid. And I thought that doesn't make any sense. You know, you're still gonna, you're gonna pick up more sound from the sides and why would you wanna do that? Well, the point that one person made was that if you, the, the pickup patterns, if you look at the diagrams for the pickup patterns for hypercardioid mics versus cardioid mics, and these are just some examples here, the rear of the microphone on a hypercardioid actually picks up more than the rear of a cardioid mic. And that could be part of the reason why we're still experiencing a fair number of issues with picking up echo with a hypercardioid mic. So I thought, let's try it out. In my last video, if you check it out, which had nothing to do with sound, it had everything to do with lighting, uh, I put in this cardioid mic, uh, namely Rode NT1A. Now this is not really the type of mic that ideally I'd use, but it is one of the few cardioid condenser mics that I have. So I just started playing with it to see if it would respond pretty well for filming. And I have these uh, approximately 18 to 24 inches from me, both of them. This is the Audio-Technica 4053B. This is the Rode NT1A. And you are hearing what they sound like here in my echo chamber. <laughs> this is part of my house where the floors are wooden. Uh, we've got obviously relatively low ceilings. It's eight foot here, 12 foot back there. Um, lots of hard surfaces and it's a horrible place to record audio at least. Visually, it could be okay. It's not amazing, but this is, this is what we have. So let me just read a little fictional letter that I'd considered sending to Nikon and compare the two mics. Dear Nikon, thank you for making some awesome cameras like the D800 and the D600 series. These cameras make exceptional still photographs and it is clear you put some serious thought and consideration into their design. However, as I shoot more and more video, I find your cameras to be surprisingly frustrating to use. Not because they aren't capable of making rather nice motion pictures, but because they could be so much better with what seems like relatively little effort on your part. For example, the marketing for the Nikon D600 on your website in the USA indicates that the Nikon D600 uses the same high quality image processor as the Nikon D800. Why then did you not include a simple histogram in video live view mode on the D600? Did you assume that non-professional enthusiasts don't care about getting their exposure right and don't know how to use a histogram? Also, why not beat your competition and add higher bitrate recording modes and higher frame rates? And on the Nikon D810, why didn't you include 4K video? What about 422 10-bit output on the HDMI port? There seem to be so many opportunities to make your cameras better for video that would not hurt your core still photography customer base. I hope you will consider this feedback constructive rather than critical and hope you are able to add some of these features in your future cameras. Best regards from one of your biggest fans, Curtis. 
P.S. I like my new Panasonic GH4, but wish it had a bigger sensor. I would happily buy a new Nikon if it had all the awesome video features that the GH4 has, plus a bigger sensor. So what do you guys think? Does it make a difference? I haven't listened to it yet, so I don't really know. Go ahead and leave comments down below. If you think it does make a difference and if it's worth testing, uh, let us know also, should we get our hands on a Rode NT5, which is a small diaphragm condenser microphone that has a cardioid pickup pattern. We could go ahead and put that head to head with our Audio-Technica 4053B hypercardioid mic and see if that makes a difference. The advantage is if it does make a difference and if it does work well, the NT5 would be a really pretty nice choice because it only costs about $200 to $250 US versus this hypercardioid, which was about a $600 US mic. So let us know down below. If you haven't already subscribed, make sure you do that. We'll be sure to get you more great videos on how to improve your lighting and sound for video. Talk to you soon.